Welcome back to the Roy Works channel. Uh, my name is Jason Roy. In today's video, we are going to install a dual chambered master cylinder in my CJ2A project named Ned. So let's get to work. So I decided to go with a dual chambered master cylinder just because it I feel like it makes it a lot safer to drive. It protects against if you lose uh, a brake line that you have a secondary backup uh, that allows you to brake safely. Um, it's definitely going to be different than when you brake normally, like the pedal goes way further down, but at least you have an, a chance to brake. Uh, I didn't realize that they had conversion kits for these. I would have put those that actually in my FC also, uh, but that's all right. Uh, in this case, I, I definitely wanted to go with the dual chamber just in case I end up selling it or if one of my sons end up driving, it's a little safer. In this case, I've already removed the old master cylinder. It actually was located right here. Um, and this support plate goes to a pivot point on the actual brake pedal. So I've already removed the master cylinder and this is just hanging here. And I also removed the cotter pin that was holding this bracket in place. So now I'm able to get rid of that. So the parts that actually come with this conversion kit from Kaiser Willys, a bracket here that goes on the pivot point um, and then that, that bracket that actually holds the master cylinder and actually this push rod in a series of nuts and bolts and washers. So it's actually a pretty basic setup. The only thing that I could criticize um, about getting this setup is they don't come with good instructions. Uh, they come with this that uh, vaguely tells you how to install it, but I feel like really don't show you a lot of detail on like where the brackets go. Um, typically before you would install this, you would actually uh, bench bleed uh, the uh, master cylinder. Uh, I'm not gonna do that just yet. I'm gonna wait until I'm closer to doing the brake lines. And I'll, this will actually be really easy to remove to be able to bench bleed. Uh, plus if I had to, I could actually do it right in place because I'll have really good access to it. Um, which most likely that's probably what I'll end up doing anyway, is doing it right in place. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is actually install that bracket. So I'm going to put this bracket on here to get my location. This is kind of a fixed point here. So I know, I know that's where that bracket has to go. And these actually line up with these holes right there line up with the holes on that bracket. take two of these smaller screws came with that and I'll kind of put it in place there. So what I'm going to do, I won't be able to drill good this way. So I'm going to find out where this is going to be. I'm going to make a mock and I'm going to actually flip this over and transfer it onto the other side because it sits on the bottom here and it seems to sit right there. Right, so you can see on this bracket, 
um, that both sides are symmetrical. It's the same distance here as it is to here. Um, so if I have this like this on the frame, as long as I flip this over, it should be, I should be able to put it on the outside of the frame and line up with my mocks and be able to mock out the holes. And it also sits on the bottom of the frame. So I'm gonna try that and see if I can be able to transfer those holes onto this side and drill through um, instead of being very awkward and drilling through this way. All right, so I got all those bolts in. That was definitely a pain because of this hair. That would have made a good uh, blooper video if you watched me how many times I dropped the nut trying to put that together. Uh, so now I'm gonna just install this bracket here. So I have this bracket installed. Um, I just have to straighten it out a little bit. But what I, what I did notice when I tr tried to put this um, in place, that when it lines up with the holes, it actually hits this bracket right here. So um, I'm gonna remove that bracket. Um, that isn't part of the frame. It was just a bracket that held the old master cylinder and by uh, further uh, investigating, I found out that you're actually supposed to remove this bracket. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and remove that now. All right, with that out of the way, this fits a lot better now. So I'm gonna just bolt this in.
I'm gonna just snug these up for now because I might be taking this back out to bench bleed it. I just want it to be in place, know how it's gonna go. All right, so next I'm gonna put on the push rod, uh, but I'm gonna just put it in place just temporarily uh, because once I get the brakes all installed and the tub installed, then I'll know exactly where this, this is gonna be, this bar. Uh, so I'm gonna just put it in place for now. All right, guys, well, that's gonna be it for today. Uh, that was actually really easy to do. Uh, definitely well worth the effort, you know, for that much safety. Uh, you know, it is a little bit more expensive, but, uh, you know, I feel like you can't put a price on that much safety. Uh, so like I said, this is gonna be it for today. Um, I was a little delayed in ordering the parts for uh, the front brakes. Uh, or well, the front hubs. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly when those are going to come in, but hopefully by next week. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to work around the shop. Uh, I'm not going to film it, but I'm going to finish up some of the other brake work. Uh, but you guys have a great week and I will see you next time.